Because psychoactive substances have arisen throughout the course of civilization. When we realize that people learn how to use substances socially and they remit socially, the returning Vietnam veterans, the physician addicts, when we realize that addiction isn't something linked to some specific neurochemical or any specific chemical or even to like narcotics or opiate molecules or to drugs at all, but is it not limited to any specific area, but covers the whole range of human involvements, you can't call those things so naturally embedded in history and civilization and normal functioning in everyday involvements, you can't label that a disease. It's like labeling breathing and drinking water and eating a disease, which by the way, we are doing. Of course we are on the verge somehow of linking some kinds of eating to diseases. I would say you can just you can go just so far in doing that, but I'm daily proven wrong as more and more things are labeled as diseases. In America, we're reassured to label something a disease. If we can say Chris Christie, the governor of New Jersey, has a disease for being obese, it makes us feel better. Well, it's not his fault. He seems like a nice guy. There's nothing he can do about it. If we can say, well, people have an addiction to pharmaceuticals, and we give them pharmaceuticals a lot, but some people get a disease and get wedded to them, it covers a lot of territory and excuses us from a lot of basic things that we need to do. The most important thing in the therapeutics area that it prevents us from doing, um, we, the leading American uh, organization, institution that deals with uh, drug recovery is redefined recovery. It says it's based on health, functioning, community, and purpose in life. That's the opposite of a disease. In other words, the answer to recovery is to become fundamentally integrated into society. I'm writing a book right now with Elsa Thompson called Recover. It prescribes an approach to dealing with addiction which involves integrating your entire life space, uh, including neurochemicals and med through meditation techniques as a, in a natural response to the world. And that's what recovery means. It's the opposite of localizing addiction as a specific cause disease, which should be dealt with by some kind of medical therapeutic model that we've developed for dealing with diseases caused by germs, for example. This is the opposite. It's a mishap that occurs to people who fail to be able to deal with the entire range of the human experience and it requires organizing your ability to deal with the entire range of human experience, every aspect of your environment to overcome. So thinking about it as a disease is wrong on the science of it, it's wrong on the therapeutics of it, and that's not a mystery. A lot of organizations understand that. It's just that we have powerful interest groups that like, for example, pharmaceutical companies selling nicotine replacement therapies or other drugs for overcoming smoking addiction. And we'll have the same with drugs and alcohol. Uh, with all these interest groups, and unfortunately, one of those things does pop up in the harm reduction field, methadone. A, a large segment of the methadone presenting professionals say, well, narcotic addicts have diseases. They can't do anything but replace heroin or another street narcotic, except with methadone, that's the only way they can get out from under being a heroin addict by remaining some kind of narcotic addict. So we have all kinds of interest groups who are interested in proposing a disease theory. They make no sense. They're wrong in the science of it. They're immoral, in fact.